Ladies and gentlemen, this is the state of the scene. Yo, what the fuck is up, Warped Tour? The state of the scene at SOTS Podcast on all social media. Sam here with Margos. No moshing, no crowd surfing. You crowd surf, you mosh, you get hurt, we get sued. No more Warped Tour. You mosh, they take you out back and they fucking put you down themselves. <laughs> We we need like a, a real story, like like an account of anyone who did mosh or crowd surf mm-hmm. at Warp Tour that was punished by by the venue or by Kevin Lyman. I feel like even if you were thrown out, you just find a way to get back in. Like what what was what was Warp Tour security like? Were they that good? Were they that strong? <laughs> it's not like we had our fucking yeah. best soldiers out there on the line making sure no. nobody could get in the Warp Tour. Uh, there was one year they just let us in. They didn't yeah. fucking care. No padding, no nothing. Yeah, precisely. That's exactly correct. Um, like a wall at a venue though, that's like no admittance. And it's just like guys with like fucking white chapel, like takes on who have been like thrown out of shows. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a wall of shame, but you're actually pretty cool. If you make it up into the wall, you know, fair, fair. Just a guy like putting out a cigarette on stage and stuff like that. Like all of like the hardest guys at shows you've ever seen. They're just not allowed back. What, uh, what's the modern day sign? No vaping. No. I mean, vaping is allowed technically. You're saying what could we? What's left to no, ban? Like what's the warp tour? What's sign left to ban? Shit, I don't even today. know anymore. No phones. I feel like nah. that. That would be the one that I feel like would really piss people off. You know, if they were just like, "Hey, you just can't take your phone out during sets anymore." Like, I'm sorry. You know that thing where like some comedians are like, I "Actually, don't really put it in a bag." Want to get canceled for this set? So I'm gonna need you to put this in a plastic bag, and you can have it back after the show. Yeah, yeah. Bands are gonna start doing that shit. No recording shows. No more spoiling sets. Have you ever been to a show where they take your phone outright? No. Like a, a comedy oh, wait. show? No. No. I feel like I would remember if I did. Because I feel like me and my phone are inseparable. Like, we go everywhere <laughs> together. Like, you would have to pry it from, like, my cold dead. I don't think right. I... I would turn it, around and go home. Like, no be, show is worth not having my phone on. It me. would be, like, four hours of me feeling the the giant void that is suddenly in my life yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. want me to just like focus on one thing like this entire like no like don't be weird um this is kind of how i feel about it's kind of crazy to me that um you can just have like your phone in school now because like that was a thing i wasn't allowed to do in high school so now i just feel like a little like annoyed i was like i no. missed out on like a real good generation it's just like not having to pay attention to class anymore I still see plenty of videos of like the teacher being like, "Put your goddamn phone in the fucking the the Tupperware." That's a thing. It yeah. is. I just thought. I feel like every time I watch a movie, they're just like they look up from their phone, they'll like answer a question, and then they just go back to it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not sure how enforced. It's different in every class, Sam. Yeah. Every school. This was every Dune. district. So I don't know how like how true to life it was. Um, Dune. But yeah, <laughs> it was Dune. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, we went to a show. This is the Northlane headliner with uh, Invent Anime, Thornhill, and Wind Waker. Didn't it we was say a... that already? I don't think so. I did we? Know, did we? Did we? Well, just to be sure, let's say it a third time. All right. Northlane headliner. Or a second. Invent Anime, Thornhill, Wind Waker. Um, it, it's called the uh, 75% Australian Tour. Get it? That's like... Um... If you live in like a different universe, like you're not seventy percent water, you're seventy percent Australia. Yeah, he's seventy five percent Australian <laughs> right. on like his mother's it's side. Like the the re- yeah. the red lights here are green, you know. Uh huh. The world's upside down. You just have to like you got to prove you're Australian if you want to call yourself Australian metalcore. Like we're gonna see we're gonna see papers. This is like <laughs> when they were trying to make sure Obama was actually like qualified to be president. I was like, all right, Parkway Drive. Let me see your passport. Right. Prove this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because I feel like... I feel says like, here you're from New Zealand. Funny you should have been like out of Pittsburgh could do is call themselves Australian Metalcore. I swear to God there was a band recently who did something like no, this. No. It would be very funny. So I hope it's true. We're going to circle back to I it, when, know, it know, I don't know. when it comes to you like two quarters yeah, of the way through this episode. I know. I know. Yeah, um, yeah. Very, very happy with this show. Band of the show. Band of the show. Band of the show. I'm going to hit you with something crazy. Thornhill? Wow. You might be right, honestly. What's Thornhill crazy? we've now seen right. twice. Um, not what? not that this means much, but better than the first time we saw them, which I remember being like a top fucking 50 set I'd ever seen in my life. Okay, so then this is what? Top 25? It might be. Like, Thornhill just fucking deliver. 
something translates so well about their sound live. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Also, they I feel like they actually broke out all the heavy ones for this because I do not remember anything off that album sounding this fucking Bands do in fuck your shit. face live. Bands do fuck shit live where they make everything sound heavy, no matter whether it was like in the recording or not. You know what I mean? Like suddenly you got a growl at the end of a Dude, song that was acoustic. Viper Room, I think is what it yeah. was called, was like the softest song they played that night. Right. It, it probably wasn't, but it sounded like that. You know what helped? You know what helped is that this crowd was like absolutely primed to lose their shit at absolutely anything and everything. So it was like band took the stage, mosh pit opened up. Band like took a breath on the mic, like the haymakers were getting thrown in that pit. Like this this crowd almost made the show. This was like this was like the rare instance where like I walked out of a metalcore show with respect for the crowd. I was like, this was a good crowd. This Boston was, showed the fuck up tonight. It was cool. Well, Boston's got a reputation for showing up for shows. Yeah, but, but sometimes I feel like, Boston's fucking annoying right, too. What I'm saying is like, I feel like that really only applies to like the weekend, like Friday, Saturday. People I thought you were talking about the artists. Especially artist. let loose for the weekend. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Boston shows up for the weekend. Yeah, of course like we the do. Performing artists. Um, but but this was like a Wednesday night, which what that's what made me more proud. Wednesday night in summertime, it's baby. It's like, damn, y'all are fucking moving. And we were slightly involved too because we found ourselves on the edge of the pit. I love you taking which partial we credit don't, here. Dog, my fucking arms have been yeah, sore. Yeah, bro thinks he's on the team. The past guys. couple of days. I'm Barbara on the shoved team. at least bro, three I people that day. At least 300. Yeah. 300 yeah, yeah, yeah. bodies. I was doing that thing where I was helping people out with the. Uh, I had hockey pit. assists I like, on the, little... the mosh pit. <laughs> I like that boost in Mario Kart. I was like, you hit me, and like, you're going to pick up a like. A little bit of speed, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like um, running, driving over a fucking mushroom in Mario Kart. Let me find it. I think I'm an anime might have been my band of the show. Really? You I know what's like, you know what's a little disrespectful what? is North Lane was so fucking good. North Lane was great too. Wind Waker was also a lot of fun. Like I, I didn't have a, a badge. I had a great show, but like you, the whole point of this is to nitpick absolutely everything to death. So let's sit here and talk sure. about the band of the show. You saw and. Uh, invent animate perform a headlining set I last did. year i and did you were disappointed i was having a bad night you know when you have like nights where just like it almost doesn't matter how good the thing is you're just like off so it's like it's depression my boy even animate might have been great that night sure um <laughs> it's just like i wasn't gonna have a fun time doing anything that day sure but even animate the like a couple days ago holy fucking shit that band is like I don't, I don't want to, like, say anything, like, too crazy, but that band probably, for me, is right now one of the most important bands in, like, metalcore period. Like, I just feel like they are so insanely good. Like, they are such, like, at a peak that they're almost, like, putting three-tenths of, like, the genre on their own back. It's like, like, metalcore within the next three years could very well be defined by how good the next Invent Animate album is. They hit, like, the level two where they can start putting in, like, a good bit of money into their show so they have like yeah. this cool light set up lights. behind them uh they've they of course have like their their whole image down pat and they have like stage outfits and i, I really like like the whole neutral tones and stuff like that like you know what i really appreciate like... i really appreciate that the effeminate uh post hardcore frontman is making a comeback in a big way. In a big way. I feel Crop like we, tops. We man. went through a few years where like everyone was a little too buff for a little too long. It was like yeah. everyone was a little too jacked. And now we're going back to where everybody's a little bit everyone's a little bit like like you can you can almost thank Jacob from Thornhill for being like a real trendsetter on this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Sure. Like suddenly we're getting like a lot of eyeshadow back and stuff like that. We're getting like a little bit of like sparkles. We're getting like fishnets and stuff. We are getting fishnets. It's like we're going back yeah. to like we're going back to a very specific era, and I'm here for it. I'm just all over it. Same. Uh, we're going to talk about Wind Waker a little bit more uh, later in the episode when we review that brand new album. But again, like you said, North Lane killed it. North Lane just always consistent. They haven't missed for me for a very long time. L the new stuff live, sounding very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, Off that new EP that dropped earlier this year. Very happy with that set, of course. Marks, um, before we move on, I want to explain the show a little bit. Did you have any other thoughts about this show? No. Okay. We're going to talk about some smaller news topics before we get into a little bit of data discourse, some patron questions, and then uh, we'll jump into the bigger news before we review a couple albums. Like I mentioned, Wind Waker, but uh, also the home team, brand new albums. Uh, this is a big release day, by the way. We had new albums from Speed and In Hearts Wake as well, which we actually reviewed on the episode prior to this, if you want to go check those out. Uh, and then, like, Graphic Nature dropped, too. It was, like, a lot of fun stuff like out there to go check two, out. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It was a good day for releases. Um... 
I want to talk about some of the tours that got announced this week and kind of get a vibe check on them. Okay. Norma Jean announced the uh, 1984 North American tour with support from Darkest Hour and Teeth. The tour poster is like every single one of Norma Jean's albums. So it's Love got. That. Yeah, it, like, it, like, it gives the air that, hey, we're. It's like a stack of CDs, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. but it's like, um, it's like uh, art. It's not like the actual CD stack. Right. Like the, right. the one it's where a Young design, Fast style. Like aesthetic, like showing a bunch of CDs. They're all Norma Jean albums. It gives the impression that they're going to be playing like something from every album in their catalog you know what i didn't like like a journey through norma jean's whole discography it was definitely like stacked in the way that the band appreciates the records oh you think it was like telling of something i saw like meridonial all the way at the bottom it's got a crack in it right well i'm thinking like okay not it's not their first or last album it's like their middle album so why is it at the bottom like Like, why is it dust yeah it's not alphabetical i don't think Uh like Uh i see that and i'm like that was a great record what are we talking about (laughs) wasn't their best um was a great record well let me get let me get a hype level check let me get a uh give me a hit or miss bummed on this one give me a hit or miss give me a hit or miss it's a miss it's a miss because i wanted and all due respect to teeth who's a band i don't know if i've ever listened to I wanted Darkest We've Hour. We've covered teeth on this show. They're We've actually covered teeth on good. this show. They're fine. They're good. <laughs> I don't think we've ever covered Darkest Hour. I'm pretty sure I was in that band and out of that band by the time we started this podcast. <laughs> I heard you were in that band for a second, and I was like, what? I was in Darkest Hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had a flute guy for a little while. I There's what like one, album? one Darkest Hour song I love, and for that reason alone, I wanted them to play our date, which they do not. That song is... I believe it's pronounced convalescence, and it was uh, it was Maybe. a real fucking like LimeWire 2005 mm. download heater that just lived on the iPod. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Neck Deep announced the Dumbstruck, Dumb Fuck North American tour with support from uh, the Home Team and Super American. Marcos hit both a, miss. a hit and a miss. What the fuck? Are you miss doing? <laughs> because it doesn't come here. <laughs> oh shit! To New England. I knew this was going to be the case, considering they were just here not that long ago. Yeah. This is a B market tour. It's a B market tour, and it's a hit because it's got home team and Super American to support, and that's excellent. That's yeah. A, and and uh, additionally, Dumbstruck, Dumbfuck getting like uh, continued life. I, I think it's like their most underrated song title ever. Ooh. So I'm glad that it's getting like the tour name nod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're Such right. a great, like, dumbstruck, dumbfuck. It's just, mm, There's definitely going to be, it. like, uh, obviously it says it on the post, but you got to think they're going to have, like, a tour-exclusive T-shirt that's got it, like, scrawled all across Positive. it. Uh, Marcus, the Ghost Inside announced the Searching for Solace tour with support from Gideon, Void of Vision, and Of Virtue. Hit or miss? It's a hit. That support's just crazy. Support's insane. Support is absolutely insane. From Gideon, top to bottom. Gideon, I feel like, is one of these bands that is quietly getting bigger, you know? We talk about bands yes. that like explode out of nowhere. Gideon feels like one of these bands who just keeps doing the work and like slowly their name just keeps rising on all of these bills. Especially because like the country stuff is really starting to pick up. I know Gideon's, the timing Gideon's is been at that level. Ironically, they were there too early. They were. Yeah. Uh, uh, Void of Vision is probably one of my uh, favorite live performances I've seen in quite some time. Side note. What? Did side you note? remember that Ghost Inside album came out? I did remember. I just wasn't overly fond of it, and that's fine. The Ghost Inside, um, we can have a discussion about this later. Uh, I've kind of have it prepped when? in the back of my mind during our Wind Waker discussion about okay. the, this, uh, the fucking same conversation we have every week about the state of metalcore. <laughs> it's the state of the scene for a reason. It's the yeah. name of the show. Uh, we'll get to it later, Marcos. Uh, the Double Wars Prada announced is eternal t- the, the tour with support from <laughs> Silent Planet, like Moths to Flames, and Grey Haven. Hit or miss. This is a certified hit. Okay. Certified hit. This is your hardest hit? Hardest hit. um, Again, some fucking beautiful support. And I think it's highlighted in this instance by Greyhaven, which is the smallest band on this bill, of course. Mm -hmm. That's why they're opening. Yeah. But they're fucking throwing punches with the best of them. I think Greyhaven are fucking rock solid. They always have been. Could be a breakout tour for them. That EP they dropped this year was excellent. I think they're planning on dropping another. I forget exactly, but like... This is exactly the type of support slot they needed. Yeah, this feels like it could be a, a big breakout for them. This, this is the right crowd to put them in front of. Uh, Marcus, and finally, Drop Dead Gorgeous announced they uh, were back with a one-off show this December in Colorado. Thoughts? I'm going to need more context, but this is a hit. This is a hit. Everyone's wanted Drop Dead Gorgeous back. Everyone has always... Everyone. A lot of people in the scene has, 
have always no, I like everyone. Let's go with everyone. Called everyone has always called Drop Dead Gorgeous like the most underrated band in the scene, mm-hmm. like just over its history, and I think that's accurate at times. I think they'd be a fun uh, album to bring to ranking the scene. I'd really love to dive back into them um, and kind of get a feel for what they sounded like. Let's uh, let's fucking go ahead and lock it in. Yeah, that'll be our way of experiencing this thing. We're definitely not going to get to go to their latest uh, album. Enjoy. (laughs) As always, every link you need is in the description of this episode, including our socials, playlist, merch, and Discord. Subscribe to us on YouTube at SOTS Podcast YT and leave a thumbs up if you're watching the video version of the podcast. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please leave five stars. We are uh, still crawling up to 700 reviews on Spotify, which is nuts. I think we're like 20 away. So we need um, B number 700. We need 20 fucking real ones. We need 20 fucking losers to just log on to their phone and leave us five stars. And that could 20 be losers it. who we love. 20 losers we love, Mark. So let's get into some data discourse. More exorbitant VIP costs. 21 Pilots fans shared in their dismay this week, Mark, over the newly announced Fan Premier Exhibits $150 price tag. I know, you're wondering, what does that include for the price? Pre-show access to the fan premiere exhibit featuring band memorabilia from their personal collection, interactive photo ops, fan lounge, and more. Uh, Plus pre-show access to shop merchandise, FPE exclusive souvenir package, including signed item, commemorative FPE laminate markers. What does it not include? You guessed it, a concert ticket. Feelings on the continued cost of VIP seemingly seemingly skyrocketing i don't know to be fair 21 pilots has been a band that has been very popular for a very long time now for all i know their vip experiences could have been 150 dollars on the last tour as well this is of course a miss um but 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 should mention you are technically getting a steal here if you what's the steal (laughs) the steal is it's it's Two for the price of, of one in the, in the case of you're getting two 21 pilots. It's the worst bit. This is the most terrible bit you've ever done. Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is Travis Parker, you meet one guy. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're talking 21 about, so pilots, you meet two. Travis Parker was and it's for a for, thousand dollars for a tattoo and a right. hug. This is for seven times less the price. Okay, you're right. So by virtual right. comparison, you're saying like Blink-182 fans absolutely lost cause. There's no saving you. 21 Pilots fans, I don't know, maybe $150 is looking all right. Yeah, let's you look know, at the could value be worse. here. You could be a Blink fan. Yeah, you could be paying seven times more to meet one less person. What do you like about this fan premiere exhibit that you think is in the $150 range? Interactive photo ops for me sounds insane. Like, am I getting picture with like a digital projection of 21 Pilots? This is like... um. When a company tries to creatively tell you they're laying people off oh, or they're they're incorporating AI into their whatever their app. I kind of see what you're saying. It's like, yeah. just say like you can take a, a photo with, a with the band. Like I don't interactive photo ops is a strange way of just saying like. I don't think it is a picture with a band. I think it's actively not a picture with a band. I think it's some sort of other interactive photo opportunity that is not a picture with the members of, i don't think you meet the members of that is stu- pilots then it's stupid i this don't is... think they're a part of this whatsoever except in like all of their if you don't meet two of the 21 pilots then this is yeah. such a fucking highway robbery on their part sure set up set up the fucking the skeleton costume and a fucking a vulture like a what do you do when you like stuff a vulture a stuffed vulture yeah what is it taxidermy taxidermy, a taxidermy yeah, vulture yeah, yeah. and the fucking the skeleton uh hoodie and you can take a photo with them but you don't get to meet the band highway robbery on this band's part fuck them actually travis barker at least you get to fucking meet the guy at least you get to fucking meet the guy I, i'm curious though if there's another like vip opportunity that isn't mentioned here but then i'm assuming that that also comes at a cost so like you're in like a grand for the full 21 pilots experience if you really want it. The biggest miss here too is you're also paying more for the fucking ticket. Also paying more for the fucking ticket, yeah. which is crazy. That price varies too. Yeah. I tried to get those tickets. They were expensive. 
I, lo- I hovered on that purchase button for quite some time, and I just couldn't bring myself to it. I might turn around. I don't know. I really want to catch 21 Pilots. Uh, if you want to support the show, consider becoming a patron for exclusive content, the ability to submit questions to the show, and producer credits on all of our video content. Marcus patrons also receive access to our bonus podcast, SOTS Deluxe. On this week's Deluxe, we talk, you're not going to fucking believe it, but a My Chemical Romance song leaked off of an album that was never released, and we're going to dig in. I'm trying to figure out exactly what the fuck is going on. R yeah. five. Right. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yes. Uh Marcus, patrons can also submit suggestions for our weekly YouTube show, Ranking the Scene on this week's Ranking the Scene, our YouTube exclusive show airing every Wednesday. We bring albums from the home team, Stand Atlantic, and of Mice and Men. Wednesday at SOTS Podcast YT. Link All debuts in the description of this episode if you're listening on Spotify or Apple. Our patrons want to know this week, Margos. They get to ask us questions because they signed up at patreon.com slash SOTS podcast for only $3 a month. Scene Labs podcast asks, do y'all's parents also like scene music and do they fully understand the podcast? That's going to be a no. Has any parent fully understood a podcast before? I don't know. I feel like our mom listens to podcasts. Not ours. Our mom listens to, to our podcast too much, actually. Really? Yeah, Am I I'm, aware of this? I'm aware of this. What, did she ever, what did she like, didn't really like your take the other day on Palo Royale. And you're <laughs> not like, quite. All right, I'm not getting into this, mom, right now. It's breakfast time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like our parents do not listen to. She's like, I heard that my chem song. I don't know. Thought it was all right. Could you imagine? There's no I, way she listens to it in a I, way that already, she's actually invested. I already can't handle these conversations with you. What do you mean? Having to do it with more blood would be crazy. You can't handle the show? I can't. I've never have been able to. Um, it, Okay, so apparently our mom kind of listens to this podcast, going to the Margo. But, so but like not. this music? Nah. No, it does no. not fuck with this music at all. Even like, even like, you know that thing you used to do when you were younger? Um, or maybe you do it now. You're like, hey, mom, dad, I know you said this band is ass, but let me play you the soft song on this album, and I think maybe you'll really enjoy it. Look at bro. Like, I missed 1,000 out of 1,000 times trying to pull that shit on my parents. They did not give a Um, fuck ever about any of it. You change the approach over the years, and nowadays it's like, well, obviously the type of music we cover on the show is very different than just like only the metalcore we were consuming 10 years ago. Uh, so, like, I can show my mom a Nothing But Thieves song and she'll enjoy that. But I can't really? show her. Yeah. Like, I, I showed our mother. Welcome to DCC. I didn't know you were still out there doing the work. Dead Club City. Uh, I was I, I, occasionally. Okay. Yeah. So. That's cool. But it's not everything. I can't wait to do this someday in reverse when I have a kid. And then, like, 10 years from now, I'm like, sit down and listen to this shit. This was real shit. This is called Drop Dead Gorgeous. It's called... They you only live once. You, you, you wouldn't even fucking understand, dog. Positive Metalhead asks, how many times do you try to listen to an album that you are ranking on your YouTube exclusive show airing every Wednesday night, ranking the scene episodes? If it's an album I've already heard, one time over. One time. If it's an album I have not heard before, at least twice, so I have a good feel for, for all of it. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I like a hot take. I love listening to it the day we're going to be recording it. I just want to come in on everything hot. Yep. Uh, Matthew A asks, there's talk of the all-stars tour coming back. Do you think it can have a stacked lineup like the first one from 2011 did? Which bands would you guys want on it nowadays? Does it kind of feel like we already have like 25 versions of tours that are like eight bands? Right. Summer Slaughter is pretty much an all-stars tour from like eight years ago. Right. I I think you still are dealing with, um, essentially things trying to capture, big lineups in the way that like capture the essence of a warp tour without full out doing the festival. And like, for mm-hmm. example, you have sad summer fest, you have summer slaughter, which existed prior. I, I, I get that. Um, but even recently, like the, uh, the dropouts tour, uh, summer dropouts, I, I forget what it's called. Um, summer school. It's called summer school tour, summer school, and metalcore dropouts. You're just confused. Metalcore dropouts. Yeah. And then like, sad summer. That's right. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Like, I, I think that we're still getting it. So there's not like this big desire for me for something like an all stars to return. But if it were to. Yeah. I, I don't remember the um that year's lineup 2011 off the top of my head, but just run that back entirely. I wonder how many bands on there have been canceled. 
We don't got to talk about that. <laughs> Alex F. asks, pick one food, one band, and one video game for the rest of your lives. Go. Marcus, go. One band. Fucking go. One opportunity. Yeah. T to choose a dish. You're choosing to... Eminem as your one band. It's crazy. <laughs> He's, he dropped a new album. Let me start with one food. Okay. Tacos. I feel like there's a lot of variety there. I feel like that's broad. You know, it's like picking pizza. Okay. Like, I feel like there's enough combinations where I could keep things interesting for a real long time. But tacos is like my preferred food. So I'm going tacos. You would. You would. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with. Yeah. Pistachios. Fucking. I don't even think you could get the right nutrients in your body <laughs> to live. But sure. Well, I feel like I'm allowed to still uh -huh. like. Can I still do uh -huh. like everything with pistachios in the sense of uh -huh. like. Can I make. Can I make pistachio ice cream? One band, Marcos. One band. Um, one band. I'm gonna go with Ice Night Kills. Ice Night Kills is the only band you want to listen to the rest of your life. That that is like so insanely telling. Like that's so crazy fucking hard telling. coded, baby. It's weird, but I'm gonna say Bring Me the Horizon. I just think they have enough variety, and their catalog is so big at this point that I think like at this point in my life, they'd really be the band that could like suffice me for like the rest of eternity. No, I mean that's definitely like a bigger option and it's also um like that's what you factor in right like a band with a lot of material uh-huh like, i'm not going to tell you wind waker again who we're going to talk about later in the show they got two albums but I'm, I'm weighing that versus like a band with like six seven eight exactly you can start thinking you can start thinking people have been around for a long time and whose catalogs have stayed strong you know what i mean true uh one video game replayability a big factor here big factor bioshock one Bioshock 1. Bioshock, you keep playing Bioshock 1 over and over and over and over and over again? I like killing little sisters, Sam. What can okay. I say? Okay. Okay. Uh, one video game, all time. Uh, Rest of Eternity. Just going to keep playing it over and over and over again. It's got to have It's got to have replayability. It's got to have fucking replayability. I need something that, like... I think I'd go like Smash Bros, honestly. Fun. I think that, I like... like No he, story, though. Technically. <laughs> <laughs> Technically. I get all the DLC, obviously. I go with like the newest one, right? There's a lot of content there. Um, Caillou asks, do you think Warp could come back pretty much the same as it was, or do you think it needs to be updated or changed in any other ways? Um, I think the financials of Warp Tour probably wouldn't survive nowadays climate unless ticket prices jumped significantly and then at that point, is it still Warp Tour like Warp Tour used to be, right? So I was actually reading an old article the other day, and it was talking a little bit about uh, Kevin Lyman complaining about metal bands acting too big for Warp Tour, acting for too much money, and how it was going to kill the festival. And he was talking about it in like 2017, and then a couple <laughs> years later, there's no more Warp Tour. Yeah. And I think nowadays, like that's. Um, even worse than it would be because bands have like these offers to play these massive festivals for just one date. So you'd have to like compare that to like the value of like, is Warp Tour worth it? Like it's a big commitment. Like, is it better to do that than to just bring your own crowd out on like a headliner and then play a couple of these festival dates in between with like a big payout? I don't know. I don't think like monetarily. It's really there, and you need those big bands to bring people in. Like, you can't just suffice off of, like, a lot of smaller bands. I feel like Warped Tour tried to do it, and then they ate it when they had, like, Attila as their biggest headliner one year. It wasn't enough for people. And then, like, very quickly, we saw Warped Tour disappear. That was, like, one of the big ones that, like, and then it ended. Um, And taking a lot of those points into consideration, I think that... I feel like the best course of action for a Warped Tour revival would be taking two, three, four at most of those headliner caliber bands nowadays. Um, bands that are really like selling out shows and venues the moment they announce something. Yeah. And then probably putting either 10, 15, 20 bands beneath them for a festival date. And then also reducing the amount of dates you do is really the only way you could. I don't know. I think so. There are ways you can bring it back, way... but I don't think you could do it pretty much the same. Yeah, I, I think that's the part where it's not going to happen. I think you do like 
10, 12, 13 at most states. And maybe what you do is you like that support is really different from date to date. And, and like, maybe that's something that's possible. I think you would probably have to do it that way where a band would probably jump on for like a few days at most and then like drop off. Like, I think it'd be tough to get like full summer commitments from the bigger artists. I think you'd have to get extremely creative is what I'm trying to say. But it's unfortunate because I feel like, uh, Warped really had the opportunity to like, sort of like continuously create like content and news stories and like, bring those smaller bands to the forefront i think it was really pivotal in the ecosystem and i think like we still continue to suffer without it even though the scene as a whole is fine i think its value is missed leo asks what do you guys think is worse amazing album but you hate the cover art or you absolutely love the cover but you can't connect to the music i don't like this question what do you mean you don't it's like this hard question? it's easy for me what is it I would. It's the second one. It, yeah, it's love the cover, but can't connect to the music. Like that's like a bummer. That's like you see amazing album art, and then you go listen to it. And it's like I don't fuck with this album at all. Like mm. because for me to like want to go out and like buy a that's vinyl, I kind of gotta like fuck with the album too. It's you know heartbreaking. What I mean? Um, and then a really great album with bad art. Like we've gotten a lot in the I'd past. I'd probably still buy that vinyl though. You know what sucks. I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't. Like if we're talking about like where I'm gonna commit, I'd probably still commit to that. I wouldn't. What uh, some examples off the top of your head between both of these? The album art. I really don't like. Fuck. This is so on the spot, right? I now. will always have one, and I I don't know if you agree. Well, hit me with it. Um. Famous last words. I think it was called Sh the charade or something like that. That sounds correct. The the album of like, anytime it's like, anytime it's like, uh drawn art and this applies to like tour posters too where it's like i don't know it's like figures with like not the right proportions and things like that it's it just really not you don't like yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah god i really don't think i have one of these or like an album that i love but like i really hate the album art. like nothing's immediately coming to mind was a little frustrating i certain there are dozens of examples but we might have to circle back to this question another okay. day Jacob asks, other than the show, what do you guys do for work, Marcos? Do for work? Yeah, I what do you do for IT. work? It's not that fun. Yeah, I'm in analytics. It's, like, even worse. Like, if we didn't have the show, we'd honestly have nothing. Andrew W. asks, have you ever visited another country? And if so, what was your favorite place to visit? Um, Spain for me. It's Spain for yeah, me. Yeah, it's Spain. Barcelona. It was amazing. Barcelona's great. Yeah. Uh, go back in a heartbeat. And finally... Once again, if you want to ask a question on the show, patreon.com slash SOTS podcast, sign up for only $3 a month. Heather wants to know, what is a band that one of you likes that the other hates? I don't know about hate, but I seem to have a much stronger affinity for like Blink-182 than you certainly do. No, I, I, no? I fuck with Blink now. You're not thinking of the right band. You want me to say Slipknot. Yeah, I want you to say Slipknot. But I don't quite fuck with Slipknot <laughs> as much as I You're used to after the last few albums. You're a big Slipknot. I like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's, like, a critical example. That, but there's not, like, a really good example of, like, a band that, like, in nowadays really I adore. We that are 97.9% .9 aligned. Yeah. 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 Which All is, the time. For better or worse, you know? For better. As always, the news is brought to you by Shibori Threads, the clothing label of the alternative music scene. The news. One OK Rock have returned with new single Delusion All. The new track serves as a theme song for recently released film Kingdom, Return of the Great General. It's the band's first new music since Make It Out Alive dropped back in August of last year. Their last album, Luxury Disease, was released in 2022. Kingdom, Return of the Great General, is the fourth film in the Kingdom saga based on the popular manga, with the first film, Kingdom, debuting back in 2019. Marcos, fun fact, 1OK OK Rock actually contributed their popular track, Wasted Nights, to that film as well. 
One OK Rock will head out on the Premonition 2024 World Tour starting this September with back-to-back -back nights at Tokyo's Ajinomoto Stadium. The tour consists of eight nights across multiple continents playing stadiums and arenas. One OK Rock currently holds three million monthly listeners on Spotify. Marks, where do you want to start with this one? Quick temperature check, Sam, on the Kingdom film series. Haven't seen it yet. But it's but in it's, the queue. Right. Yes. It's in the queue. Um, uh, I've been having a real lot of trouble. Lately. I've always been one of those guys that's like, I'll watch a movie with subtitles and it's fine. And if you complain about it, you're stupid, actually. Like, I'm, I'm real particular about that one. Right. But I've been looking for movies to watch lately. And the second I see anything that's like full cast of foreign names, like I'm out. I'm like, I just don't have the capacity to read right now. It's like really been holding me back from watching a lot of films this that is aren't a bad made luck. Either in America, the UK, <laughs> this is a terrible or Australia. Look for you. I'm just like, I see last names that are like Swedish, and I'm like, sorry, I can't do this today. <laughs> or like a like a French director, and I'm like, I just like later. There's a certain level of concentration that I need to have to be able to like focus on a film with subtitles, even though I watch every movie with subtitles, but like, you know, explicitly. And I just haven't had it lately. I'm sorry. Nothing uh, Nothing cools me on something faster than when I learn it's French. Um, Why that? <laughs> why French particular? I, I don't know. Ron. I said it's foreigns just, like, a, like a fucking you Trump did. I, I, I really like it's been bugging me. I That's not how like, I meant it. I had to like straighten up for a second. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'm not pro wall. <laughs> All right. It came out funny. Right. I talk fast. <sighs> um, how would you think about this music video? So we got one of the rocks. Let's talk about <laughs> your There's stage dead moving center. on fast to the left. You have people to the right. You have more people. They're kind of like at war with each other. It's like, it's one of those videos. You can the context it. that this is a movie theme song for me personally saves this song a bit what why um in in the sense that if this was just a standalone track from this band with uh -huh. a music video like this they kind of lose me i got a couple of problems with this song unfortunately uh because i was really excited for one okay rock to have a brand i like to make it out alive i thought that song was solid um, and I'm like, okay, pff, brand new single, but we, we're, we're building up to the next album now. And it's like, I read a news article that was like, one okay rock are back and they're back to their rock roots. And I'm like, all right, let's see what they got. And they got a lot of acting like this song is heavier than it is in a way that's kind of really frustrating. No, they have the two sides like in a a battle battling I'm talking about the like, band's performance in particular like oh. I, like i feel like they're really trying to like sell a song that is nowhere nearly as heavy hitting as the like physical like presentation that the band is like giving. i don't know like, if i picked up on that much it's not like snapping a microphone in half it's like punching down on the ground and shit like that and i'm like i'm not here There's it's nothing pretty casual at times need to be doing all that bro was laying down on the table delivering his, his lines no we got like a know. soft headbang here and there like i'm just telling you like it just didn't like there was like a there was like a disconnect between like for me the band's performance and the song that they were singing and um, the video to be honest like everything felt like real heavy and like big and like like hard and then the song was just kind of like a little like soft and flat by comparison. It was frustrating. That's that's my problem with it. It was a flat song. And I, I don't know, like I, I remember one of the last times they collaborated with uh, a, a non band, like an, another like a IP in the sense of I remember like, because they had like another song vandalized like trailer, with, with right? Sonic. Oh, shit. For a video game, maybe? Or for a TV show? I'm also remembering another one, like, way back, way back, too. That was, like, for another film entirely. Yeah. Like, um, really early on in this band's, like... You're explosion right. Explosion into America. But I can't try to put my freaking... They were part of the Sonic thing, too? I they forgot about the that. Sonic thing. Vandalize. And I think that just came off the last record. But, like, it was just overall good. And, I don't know, this song, it's not doing it fully It didn't for hit me. in a way that was really fucking frustrating. This band's it's, it's also not Ramen. selling you know me on this Kingdom Return of the Great General You're not uh, going to see film. this film now. You're out on the film. I might be out on the film. Are you going to read the manga? I, I have to see the first one first. I have to see how well the song they used on that one works. Wasted Nights was Wasted a great Nights. song, like, it all on song. its own. It also remains one of this band's most popular tracks, as I mentioned earlier. Do you worry that this does make an album? Like, are you fine with it making <laughs> an I album? Do I worry? I don't know that I worry. I thought Luxury Disease was okay. 
Uh, 1OK Rock has really been a singles band for me for quite some time, so maybe this is worrisome in that way, mm. but I also can't say that I've had the same enthusiasm for this band recently that I had, like, even five years ago. Um, so it's all in their court to, like, really surprise me. Unfortunately, this was not the song to do it, but like I said, I was more positive on Make It Out Alive. And that said, they're about to play uh, across eight stadiums or arenas so. so they're playing like one show here in america and it's like in la and then they're playing like one show in canada one in france one in germany it's really interesting i'm really curious like how big like the stadium is that they're playing in la i'm sort of unable to pinpoint exactly what one okay rocks popularity is over here because when we saw them it was like opening for sleeping with sirens eight years ago and then i know since then they did like one headline tour out here that we missed i i think like they did a Fame headline on fire or some shit you made crazy. six you made six yeah uh and i think they at least sold out the show around here which is like house of blues boston and that's probably pretty telling as to how well the rest of the tour did i'm sure yeah they still seem to have a good relationship with fuel by ramen sort of ironically based on the conversations we had about water parks and nothing nowhere recently this marriage between band and label seems to be working out just fine for both of them yeah the main have dropped new single touch This marks the band's first new music since the release of their self-titled album back in August of 2023. A week prior to the song's release, the band shared the following on their socials. I quote, The thing that we hold most sacred as a band is the freedom to create whatever inspires us at the current moment. You'd be surprised how many artists feel like they have to create music that fits a certain sound that they think their listeners want from them. That is such a dangerous game to play because you can very quickly lose any compass as to who you actually are as an artist and what you need to say. For better or for worse, we have always taken the approach of treating each time we step into the studio like we formed a new band and have no expectations. That's why our set list can go from sticky in the ice cave into flowers on the grave. The best part is no one bats an eye, and that is what is so cool about the 8123 family. You guys have been along for this wild ride with us and keeps us feeling like the world that we can create with our music is limitless. You have to kill off your past sometimes to reinvent yourself. All that to be said, we've been up to something. The main are currently co-headlining this year's Sad Summer Fest alongside Mayday Parade and with support from Knuckle Puck, Real Friends, The Wonder Years, Hot Milk, and many more. The band currently stands at 1.1 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Marks, take it away. I, I love those two paragraphs mm -hmm. leading up to a song like Touch, which sounds 100% like what I would want from the main. So, Yeah, it does feel fresh for an artist that's been around for like two decades which but is it, impressive for right them. but it also doesn't sound too far off from what i would expect a main song to sound like mm -hmm. either, certainly in line with their last couple of albums absolutely um that last album marcos i don't believe it made our top 20 or did it i believe it did and if it didn't i was battling for it that's I kind of my that's my that curiosity record. how does it how does it still sit in your memory now eight months removed from when it came out i haven't gone back and spent a lot of time with it but i just think that's the new me and i don't do that with a lot of records i love sure. uh but i still look back on that record fondly i actually saw someone post like that they had just gotten the vinyl in the other day and like they posted a photo of it and i'm like damn i really fucking want that so there was like I see someone else enjoying this record. Reignited your interest. And it like the the seeds of jealousy, you know, are planted, right? Yeah. Okay, I can understand that. What do you think about the music video for this? I thought it was pretty strong aesthetically. Definitely. Uh and I come to expect that from the main as mm -hmm. as far as like just strong imagery, cool videos for the most part. I think they deliver here. Uh, so I think it's the pretty song much is John. extremely catchy. It is just John. To describe it a little bit, he's like in a field of like flowers and stuff like that. And he's in an all white suit. And it's really just entirely focused on him sort of like vibing out to this he's track. He's sitting on top of like a ladder and it like cuts off just so you can see like the very bottom of that or the top of that ladder. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly just him in a white suit, blue sky directly behind him. He's also in like a really nice beautiful green field middle of the summer standing on top of a mirror whoever the director a was mirror for this, shots very strong visual eye. very strong visuals 
Um, this makes me excited for the future of the main, honestly. I think that this band can continue to surprise with really exciting new songs that, like well, you said, don't feel like a hard repeat of everything that we've heard before, but still building upon what we're familiar with. It's really yeah. exciting for them. Mayday Parade have released new song, Pretty Good to Feel Something. So let's get one thing out of the way. We'll try a fun song for once. Cause I'm just out here trying to say, yeah, you were right about me. And then it comes the way it goes. The party's over anyway. This track marks the band's first new song since 2023's More Like a Crash EP. The band's last album, What It Means to Fall Apart, released in 2021 and officially concluded their relationship with Rise Records. The band has released all music independently since. Vocalist Derek Sanders shared the following about the new track. Pretty Good to Feel Something is a song about bad things happening that alter your life and how eventually you have to let those things go and move forward. It's about appreciating what's left after it's all said and done. Mayday Parade are currently co-headlining this year's Sad Summer Fest alongside the main with support from Knuckle Puck, Real Friends, The Wonder Years, Hot Milk, and more. The band currently claim 1.7 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Marcus, feelings on the main in the year of our Lord 2024? They Mayday recently, Parade. Mayday Parade. <laughs> Mayday Parade recently celebrated also, I think it was 17 years on um, that album. You know the one. The debut? With the guy a and lesson. the umbrella. In romantics. Thank you, Jesus. Um, All right. So, truth be told, I'm a little colder on this than I am that new main track. Um, Something about the Mayday Parade formula here not working for me, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, different to that main uh, music video, just how boring and plain and lackluster the video is to this track i think it's you're saying it was like critically damaging to your enjoyment of the song totally i probably enjoy this song more not watching the video alongside it but that was my first experience of i think seeing right the video honest. alongside it uh it it cheapens the experience it cheapens the song for me um what didn't work about it for you in particular so it's really just the band with a camera stage directly in front of them literally all like, the members like uh mouth. taking turns mouthing the words to the song yeah. it's technically a lyric video is how it's labeled well so that's the problem right is it's a lyric video and i just think like we didn't bring the right amount of appreciation to this song like we didn't present it at its best we sort of i think by attributing like a lyric video to our brand new song and have it be of this quality essentially feel like we sent this song out to die like we don't have the that's like how it reads to me it's like we don't have an incredible confidence about this song even if it's just the band really f having fun in front of the camera for me that just doesn't feel like there's a level of effort here that really made me excited about it yeah the the effort that I, I feel like the main put into their new track and selling their audience on that. We need a stronger visual eye. Absolutely right. need a stronger visual eye. That is is not uh, present here in this video mm -hmm. with this band. And you can be budget conscious and still have the effort to really set yourself apart and do something interesting. Because we talk about it every week with bands much smaller that claim um, millions less uh, monthly listeners than this band. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, like, especially if this is... Like, if you're getting me excited for a new era, the next era of Mayday Parade, you're not doing it with a lyric video, and it's certainly not this one. Agreed. Ice Nine Kills have teamed up with Real Big Fish on their cover of Walking on Sunshine. I used to think maybe you love me, now I know that it's true. I don't want to spend my whole life just waiting for you. The song, originally performed by Katrina and the Waves, is featured on the soundtrack to the American Psycho comic book series being released through Sumerian Comics. The series, written by Michael Calero, begins the journey of an all-new psychopath as social media-obsessed millennial Charlie Charlene Carruthers... Carruthers? Carruthers. Charlie Charlene Carruthers goes on a downward spiral filled with violence. Drug-fueled partying leads to bloodshed as Charlie leaves a trail of bodies on her way to discovering the truth about her dark nature. Spencer Sharness on the new song Per Revolver. It's no secret to Ice Nine Kills fan that Scott Punk and horror movies are what pumps through my bloodstream. When the opportunity arose to combine one of my favorite films with one of my favorite bands of all time, I didn't just jump at the chance. I skanked over to my nail gun, 
axe and chainsaw and bludgeoned out my favorite cover we've ever done. Real what? Inkheads have been quick to point out that Ice Nine Kills started life as a ska band, Marcus, before hard pivoting to metalcore. Ice Nine Kills will be heading out this August on the part two of the Kiss of Death tour, alongside In This Moment with support from Avatar and TX2. The band currently sit at 2.1 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Best song over the Elvis Presley cover. Out of their fucking mind. I'm not buying it Crazy. for a second. Over their Animals cover? Spencer Sharn is reading the marketing copy on this one. This is He's not being <laughs> honest. It's not actually, like, stop. Um, I, I 100% respect wanting to work with uh, people that you look up to and idolize. And, yeah. uh I, I, I can appreciate why Ice Nine Kills would want to collaborate with Real uh -huh. Big Fish. Yeah. But Spencer and his adoration of that band is not enough to sway me in my feelings that Real Big Fish and Ska... He can't gaslight you into is, liking Ska? ...is still not good, and it's still not the thing that I've ever enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still extremely distaste Ska. Never liked it. Um, Marcus, we're on a real haters wave with these last couple because I also did not like this at all. It's fine. Like, don't get me, don't get me wrong. This is, this, this, I don't think this is like atrocious or I think this is literally exactly what it is. Like, it just really sounds like a karaoke cover of walking on sunshine with like maybe a slightly like stronger, like, yeah, I, I don't think this is a bad cover. It's I, the, the thing with this is that it's, it's existence reminds me of things i don't like wow so i immediately phase the song out mm -hmm. and my hatred of other things yeah. come to mind that's unfortunate right so like this the song is just a vessel for me to hate other things <laughs> like i again i don't i don't mind that i snack kills made this I, I i like that they're doing their own thing there was um, a save here and i think it was the video and even that was a miss unfortunately i just didn't really like the pop comic art style of the you, whole thing I, sumerian comics as in sumerian records that's correct yes which i snack kills aren't on they are not on but they have also i think in the past helped with like sumerian films and you remember that like movie that came out a year or two ago that had like an all rock like lineup of like and i think Who even like a forget. lot of members of bands were like in it and then also like we, speaking of what you can't forget paradise rock city or whatever which also i think had artists that weren't necessarily on sumerian sure records. sure sure um how do you feel about this comic series? Anything there for you at all? I don't know. I think like this is the Netflix reboot of like a thing that I'm also not super interested. This is like a hard miss for me across the board of just about everything. Like this comic, I'm out. This song, I'm out. Right. And it's it's not like a hard miss in that like Video, I'm mad I'm at anyone. It's just yeah. like a, like none of this is for me. Therefore, I move on. Here's the only good thing. I feel like right before we got the Silver Scream two, we got the Elvis cover. So what I'm hoping You're is saying. this <laughs> is just the last barrier we have to pass technically to the new Ice Nine Kills. Technically, we got. Oh no, we already got the deluxe for that record. Silver Scream Two is three years old, by the way. Almost. Nah, I'm pretty sure it's like three. Years Dropped old, in October. Though. Fucking whatever. It's three <laughs> years old at this point in my mind. Yeah. It's been like an eternity. So like, let's fucking this band should not be heading out on tour. They need to be in that studio. They're on tour with fucking Metallica, aren't they? Okay, they're allowed to be on tour with Metallica. I'm going to allow that uh, because that's got to be really good for your finances. Still insane but then, to say out loud. Stop. Uh, Miss May, I have released a re recorded version of their song Forgive and Forget featuring Ryan Kirby and Tuck O'Leary of Fifra King. The song will feature on the upcoming 15th anniversary reissue of Apologies Are For The Week, a fully re-recorded version of the album with additional features on every track. Those features include Marcus Island Planet, Currents, August Burns Red, Our Last Night, The Word Alive, After The Burial, and more. The new re-recorded album will hit August 23rd. On Solid State Records, Marcos, the announcement that the band had moved from Sharp Tone to Solid State coincided with the announcement of this brand new re-recorded album. The band shared the following on the newest version of Forgive and Forget. 
When it came to choosing which song went best with each one of our friends, this matchup was the first one that came to mind. We have become brothers with Fit for a King over the years, and having not only Kirby, but also Tuck as well, made this track such a celebration of the song. Their dynamic alongside of Ryan and I in Forgive and Forget was meant to be. The band will be playing Apologies for the Week in full this fall on their headline tour with support from In Hearts Wake, Traders, and Bloom. Miss May I currently hold 490,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. This kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest with you, because we actually got this tour announcement way in advance, and I don't know why I didn't clock at all that this was a possibility. So when it was announced, I was like, holy shit, fuck. We're doing it right now. Like, we're really, like... We're really, I think, setting into effect what will continue to be something we get from a lot of bands moving forward. Like, I think this re-recorded, added features, like, running it back type shit, where, where, where maybe... We don't even have to include no. the label that it was recorded on in the game, <laughs> right. and we're just like Taylor Swift collecting our money on this one. So, um, I don't know if I'm surprised that I didn't see this coming. Like, I, I don't know if that's like you said you couldn't believe you didn't see this coming. I don't think that's fair, uh, to say when it's this isn't like something we expect from bands to go down is it or isn't it i was thinking about this like the other even day motionless when... and white when they celebrated creatures they released an extra song they didn't really re-record anything they didn't uh they certainly didn't go through the effort of collecting 98 features and putting them on one record right 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 right, right, right. okay well then maybe i guess in my mind and i can't think of other examples is that I feel like this opens the door wide open for a lot of bands to sit there and look at those albums with anniversaries coming up and be like yeah, we can do a lot to make more money on that. Or we can do a little to make a lot more money on this. Or or alternatively as well, how do you continue to... Like, how do you make it even more of a celebration? This is, I think, one of the coolest ways a band has done that. Like, this is a beloved record that they only stand to make more beloved. And additionally, like, you, you certainly get people's attention. Does this feel safe to you? As far as like re-recording it goes, yes, because I feel like if Miss May I today re-recorded this album, all by their lonesome, you're going to notice it sounds different. You're and saying I think the incorporating all of, of these mask. extra, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I mean to say is that is this feel like the safe bet versus recording a new album? Hmm. Because I think this is obviously what we're getting this year and it's been two years since the fuck was it called like curse of existence was that the name of the album i'm actually surprised it's only been two years but yeah it is curse of existence i'm fairly certain it's no been two you're years. probably right yeah. um i i don't know about safe i feel like you might still get a turnaround of like this to me screams more hey we booked an extra week or two of studio time to also do this you think it's excuse me that dramatic you think it's like hey we actually have another album coming out next year too but like this is gonna hold you over i think this is the move i don't know maybe it might be i i would like for miss maya to also release new songs but were you slightly disappointed that there was no music video for this no i wouldn't expect one for i i actually you we watched uh this video shortly before recording and you kind of mentioned that it's cool to just get a throwback, like Rise style visualizer. Visualizer, yeah, and it's, it's just, just the, the artwork, artwork sort slightly of like animated, floating around, slightly animated. Mm. You got like some weird little like spark effects. Album release date listed right, right. there. Can't miss it. Right. Um, that still works for me. Yeah. So like we're just tripling down on like a nostalgia play here. Miss May I, Marcos? We talked about it in another episode where they currently kind of like shifted i believe their lineup so dramatically that it's just ryan and levi that are like original members in this project and i think a lot of that's due to miss may i being a fairly inactive band most of the time mm -hmm. these past like five six years i want to say even ryan is also in as i lay dying correct yeah yeah who are currently active right now as well uh 156 Silence dropped new single, Better Written Villain. New 
new album people watch will release september 13th via sharp tone records and will feature previous single unreasonable doubt it'll follow off 2022 full-length narrative and includes features from craig owens of drugs carson pays of the callous dow boys and trey roberts of mouth for war the band had this to say on the new album People watching is the culmination of the last nine years of 156. From the very beginning of the band, we set the goal to push ourselves and make sure no two records we put out ever sound the same. I'm incredibly proud of what we've created. This album has been a long time coming. Welcome to the new era of 156. And on the single, Better Written Bill is a song that underwent heavy rewrites in the studio, but we're incredibly happy with how it turned out. The song takes you on a journey through almost every element of our sound, and I believe it's a good representation of what you can expect from the album as a whole. The chorus, as well as the ending, went through a bunch of revisions because Jimmy and I, this is Jack, couldn't agree on a melody until the very last second, but I think that's what makes it one of my favorite songs on the record, a song that thematically was inspired by, from, George Orwell's Animal Farm, specifically Napoleon. The band will be supporting Signs of the Swarm on their Decade of the Swarm headlining tour alongside Cane Hill of Sulphur and Awaken Providence later this summer. 156 Silence currently stand at approximately 38,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Marcos, I think 156 Silence still continues to be one of the most novel metalcore bands there are with a sound that isn't quite replicated by anyone else and one of the most dynamically interesting from and around. If I could be so positive. I agree. And... I think that people watching is a really excellent name for an album. Strong name. It also has like a very powerful uh, like art style to the album art as well. A real perfect for the background of this show someday. Explain type it. Thing. What's going it's on? It's like a little it? eerie. It's like a face, but it's kind of like a painting and it's creepy. Like it's a little unsettling. <laughs> it's like a face, but it's a it's painting. It's like a face painted, but it's creepy. <laughs> it's like unsettling. Fair and I, I really go for unsettling. Like whenever you manage to sort of cross the lines of like, horror and like metal like two of my favorite things in the world you've perfectly like nailed me so it's almost like the feature on the artwork is people watching you i like the theory yeah the video was people watching <laughs> uh what five six silence perform, perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a real low-key video uh but this band looks like they got a real good live performance energy so if they're just selling you on checking them out on this upcoming tour i think it's enough honestly I, I think that this band tries to sneak in like some subconscious stuff. Subconscious and what? You still way? see people like two stepping during the chorus of this song, which is very like kind of low key. And I think it's a subconscious way of getting like the mosh pit not to close up mm -hmm. during the chorus of this song. It's like the magic of editing. Right. Yeah. Um, and I hope other bands don't try doing that. Like, I, I see right through it. Yeah. No, I agree with you completely, Marcos. Let's uh, review some albums and get out of here. Breakdown. Starting with The Crucible of Life by the home team. This is the Seattle, Washington Outfits third studio album released the 12th of July via Thriller Records. The Crucible of Life consists of 12 tracks and is the long awaited follow up to 2021 Slow Bloom LP. I pulled the following context and quotes from the band's album story with Rock Sound. The majority of The Crucible of Life was created under the supervision of Skylar Accord, producer Lofile, aka Tyler Accord, their brothers, and producer Zach Jones. The band also collaborated with Aaron Marshalls, a.k.a. Intervals, who guests on Love & Company, Jared Gaines, a.k.a. Veins, you should know that artist, Sam, mm -hmm. uh, and former With Confidence frontman Jaden Seeley. I also know that artist. I would hope so. We needed people who understood the vision on this record, especially with Tyler, Zach, and Skyler. Not only do they understand the vision, but they are incredible creatives. Watching Tyler work is crazy because you can give him an idea and 10 minutes later, he'll realize it in a way that's so much better than you could have ever imagined. We respect what they do a lot. Uh, there have been times where we have had to stand our ground with everyone or we've worked with because ultimately we know our sound the best, but they're on our side. You're looking for the fourth musketeer when you work with people outside of your band and it's so important that you click. From Japanese rock to R&B to metal, our mission was to boil down a collection of all the different sounds we enjoy. The process became guided by a mantra best outlined by bassist Ryan Olson. 
You can fail at anything, so why not fail whilst doing something you love? We're all failed heavy musicians, and after we left our old bands, we started the home team to try and sell out. That was our goal, and people liked pop punk at the time, so we wrote pop punk. It didn't work, so if we're not going to make it by doing music that we don't like, we might as well just write music that we do like. As it turns out, people connect with that a hell of a lot more. I love that this band wrote a pop punk album, even though they hate novel pop concept. Punk. <laughs> Written largely about their last year as a touring band, The Crucible of Life is a vital look into the realities of life as a musician, from the euphoria of performing live to the sleepless nights and the toll that operating a non at a nonstop pace can have on your mental and physical health. It's a reminder that living the dream rarely comes without sacrifices. The theme of this album is how hard it was to write it, vocalist Brian explains. The idea of trusting yourself may seem corny and generic, but your relationship with yourself and how that affects your relationship with other people is so important, Brian says. It's often hard to be yourself because of whatever judgments you might have from your family, your friends, or a wider, wider society through, though. Uh, even for us, the idea of pursuing a band is insane to our loved ones. I think a lot of people can relate to how hard it can be just to be yourself in this world. Last quote here. You either get hardened by the crucible of life or you crack under its pressure. That's a great explanation of what this life in music has been like for us. I'm going to rewrite it. You either get hardened by the crucible of life hey. or you harden yeah, the crucible of life. Dog. You either get hard or... You die hard or you live hard, bro. <laughs> That's how this goes. Uh, right, bro. That was a lot of fucking lore to get to this. Holy shit. 12 dog. tracks. Uh, we'd heard, I think, On six the phone of them. Three years with Rock to get that fucking story <laughs> <Right>. put together. A <laughs> uh, bunch of great singles that we've highlighted throughout the year as they've dropped. Hell, I mean, Loud was so fucking good um, that I believe we in intentionally included it in our we intentionally included <laughs> it in our top songs of the year yes indeed we did sir of 2023 even though it only had like 10 days to grow on us yeah it had been out for like 45 minutes right. and we still slapped it on there um recently indicative no obviously. of how strongly we felt about that song at yeah. the time and i think that song kicked off our anticipation for this record and i think uh definitely prior to its release in the weeks leading up to it I maintain that it was still one of my most anticipated records of this year from the moment it was announced from the moment that like, it was just a little sparkle in our eye and we were looking forward to it coming out with, you know, the release of a couple singles leading up to it. Um, and here finally is Sam. What are some thoughts? It, bro. It's right here. It's right here. You know, do you know, do you know how, do you know how fucking confident you have to be? Do you know how fucking in your bag you have to be? to dump loud at the bottom of this fucking track listing and still know that you've got this some additional lore i think the band shared on twitter that this was one of the last songs they wrote for this album which may be why it ended up being the closing track which means they were so fucking locked in that like loud just came naturally by the time they got to it fuck man what do you even say about this band at this point <sighs> the the singles have been insane brag roommates overtime loud out of this fucking hell hell walk this world like out of this fucking world good this band's mission statement forget all that shit about hardened by the crucible forget it this band's statement it just is to empower you to move your fucking body that is all they fucking care about and they do it effortlessly here if there's one thing that the home team absolutely fucking solidify with this record is that they are safe they are the safest bet imaginable you see them on a fucking lineup you're good that's a good 45 you minutes see of that show they have a new song or album coming out that is a good song and a good album banger incoming they're on the playlist it's probably pretty well certified a good playlist like the home team are now just a dependable name in the scene three albums in i think you're underselling them all right, it's all the more then. Dog. I think the home team are one of the best bands that the scene has to offer currently. And this record stands to be the best example of, of that statement that I can possibly provide you. I, I think that 
should you listen to this album in full and try to come over, like around and tell me that this record is not um, written by one of the best bands in the scene currently, you're out of your goddamn mind. Okay. And you know what's crazy is that like, I don't think this band started off perfect. And I love to hear them admit that that's the case. It's like, you know what? We went out there. We tried to sell out with this pop punk bullshit. It didn't work. I think you can hear it a little bit in that album. Their second record, Slow Bloom, significantly better. But I don't think that it was perfect all the way through. I thought it was a little inconsistent. And then I feel like they fixed that in this album. So you can see the building blocks to how they got here. Yeah, the the stepping stones to discovering whatever their identity is. And it turns out it's a really cool identity. And it, mm -hmm. it turns out, above all else, that what that identity is, is this band with sauce like this band now has sauce they bring it on every track everything sounds fucking supercharged mm -hmm. they're working with incredibly talented creative people and i think it's helping bring that sound to life in a really cool way like i i, I love when a band admits like it's really hard to bring other people into the fold when you're still trying to figure out your own sound mm -hmm. and i think that it, it still culminated in what's a really excellent album. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I could nitpick a little bit. I always can. I find All Squeezed Out to maybe be the singular moment on this record that is disposable. Is it disposable because of its length, or did you not like the song outright? I didn't find that anything about it necessitated its inclusion it's a 58 in the second album. song for right. uh, context. I didn't think it was a strong interlude, and then obviously the fact that it's 58 seconds doesn't either make it a very compelling song if that's how it's meant to be presented. So overall, I think I would have loved to simply have gone straight from Walk This World with me to hell and i didn't need the buffer in between it but that's really probably it everything else on here is fairly strong love and co was a day and date single and i can understand why mm -hmm. somebody else's face featuring broadside is just a continuation of this perfect sort of dynamic that um runaway hit on this song from broadside Brian, uh ollie ollie thank you uh Continuation because Brian Oliver. was featured on the last Broadside album as well. Um, and they clearly have That's a voice point. that like contrasts like with one another extremely well. Um, one thing I do want to highlight, yeah. uh, because I, I'm seeing it a little bit more this year. And what do you I, I really want to make an effort to praise a band when they do it. Spreading out your singles over the course of the album. Smart. Agreed. Um, so appreciated. I, I love not having to skip the first six songs of an album because I'd heard all of them for the past year. Mm -hmm. And instead I get to listen to an album in full as intended, not to say that I won't usually if it's an album that's front loaded with all of its singles, but it really kills it for me because it's automatically a record that I spend more time with the back half of than the front half. Because you're trying to sort of drink in those songs that you haven't had yeah. like an eternity of time to spend with. I understand this, that. This, this, it gives me like sort of a breather after I listen to a song I hadn't heard before. And it's like, while I'm listening to, to brag, I'm still digesting, turn you off. And by the time I'm done digesting, turn you off and having finished brag, I go into love and co. And then as I digest that I'm hearing roommates and overtime, which I've already heard. And then I get to hear two new songs that I hadn't heard prior. Another song I, I uh, had already heard another song i had right it's a very dynamic so yeah. track listing it helps keep things exciting and, and it, it helps keep the pace moving right and it makes me excited to actually listen to your record as opposed to listen to the five new songs or the six new songs i got i'm excited to listen to the whole record you know um one other thing that i want to sort of call out is that you can really sort of taste the history of this band throughout this album like them talking about how they used to be heavy, them talking about how they used to be pop punk, them talking about how they just want to make something they like. And you sort of like seeing the culmination of all of that in here and little bits and pieces of it splashing across this album. It's really neat. And I think that all of that context is important. One thing that I really want to get your temperature on is the individuals that they worked with. And do you feel that what they brought to this really helped elevate it? Yeah, and I think above all else, the, the names I want to highlight are Skylar and Tyler, um, Lofile, 
who really do put their their stamp on the songs they contribute to, which included like you know opening track "Turn You Off." Like there's some uh, some brass elements to some of these songs here that I think you can specifically thank Skylar and Tyler for. Um, and, and overall, just like the energy of this record, I, I see a lot of like recommended a few likes, including someone like an issues. And I think that that extends past just collaborating with two key components of that band. This record and this band share that same like. Again, they kind of brand themselves as heavy pop, and that's what I considered issues as. At they a share an point. interesting history, too, because everyone remembers that Brian was the vocalist replacing Tyler Carter for Issue's final shows. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that sort of exists on this album in the sense of like, it's just got that breeziness to it that Issues did. And it's got that just sort of like, it's a really perfect sound. I think what you that can see a lot of it is, is the, a guidance from artists who have done this very well in the past and understand how to bring this out of someone. And I'm also really just sort of happy to see Jaden's name pop up again. I was saddened when with confidence called it a day. And I like that he's still floating around and working within the alternative space and veins. Who's a name that has simply just not gotten the love it's deserved over the course of these last few years, but who is isn't very, very talented. The big co-write from veins is on honest. Did you pick up on that? I don't know that I picked up on it. I don't know that I could pick up on it unless Vane's voice was specifically in it. Sure. I don't think I have enough of a taste for Vane's and what they would do as like a writer, but I'm very happy to see that they're working with artists who clearly are putting out very quality material. And I hope that that keeps Vane's name circulating with the alternative scene. Yeah. I think overall it's a very vibrant album, a very uh, wonderful listening experience. And I think you should check it out. Yeah. Uh, agree. record from the home team. Marcus, that leaves us with just one last record this week. Hyperviolence by Wind Waker. This is the Melbourne, Australia outfit's second studio album released the 12th of July via Fearless Records. Hyperviolence consists of 13 tracks and is the follow-up to 2022's debut LP, Love Language. This is the first project to feature return member Liam Gwynane, who previously played guitar, did backup vocals, etc., etc., uh, on lead vocals following the departure of original vocalist Will King, who left the band after the release of the debut LP to pursue a career in psychology. This new LP is also the first to feature Connor Robbins, responsible for keyboards, synthesizers, programming, who also joined the band alongside Liam in 2022. I really like to think that that culmination came from like Liam being like, yeah, I'll join the band, but I got a friend who really needs to be in a band too. So like we're like a package deal. (laughs) He can play. He's like a keyboarder. Like he can do that. Uh, from an interview with Hi-Fi Live, specifically a response from Liam about lyricism related to being an introvert while fronting a band, all while staying true to yourself. And I quote, they are personal for me, but I have to find ways of creating a narrative that allows listeners to create a narrative for themselves, because that's what I look for. In particular, those two songs, Get Out and Break the Rules, relate to the whole album that introvert slash extrovert on break the rules can apply to the whole album hyperviolence. It's almost a time capsule of when I entered the band in terms of my identity versus what's placed on me entering as a frontman, filling the shoes of someone who is beloved. The new experience of fronting a musical project in a heavy metal capacity, finding my feet that way. Also navigating life personally in a musical sense how to manage all those things and how you behave based on that. That's what I'm talking about on the album. And that introvert slash extrovert character, you could attribute to the person I am now, as opposed to the inner child who is more playful, but you're also, but you've also got the two personas, the at home persona versus the on stage persona. Fuck you kind of persona. It's center flashy and driven by ego in a number of ways. That's what I'm exploring as a concept. Uh, the characters reference 
is an interesting concept for a band that uh, this is the interviewer speaking. The can- yeah. characters reference is an interesting concept for a band that has so many strong musical styles and band members with strong contrasting images. It begs the question, do they see themselves the same way? Liam continues here. I think so. That's how I sort of looked at it. Five guys who are very passionate about music. You are right in the way that we have strengths in regards to styles and genres. The history that comes with that. Chris Lalek is a drummer and producer who loves his K-pop and top 40 pop music and production as well as the heavy stuff we all like. Connor Robbins, who loves his experimental stuff like Flume, uh, Skrillex, and all these producers, as well as the Rock and Bring Me the Horizon. I love They're talking about the Rock, uh, the wrestler. Of course, too. <laughs> I was like, strange. <laughs> uh, I love hip hop, punk, R and B, and I cover that ground. Uh, Jesse Crofts, who loves his extreme black metal. We've all got our things that we do. <laughs> this is this is critical information here. I think this is critical this lore is drop critical that we just received right here. Um, also, really important to highlight here, done with all that stuff from uh, SoFi. Yeah, we're done with that. We're moving on from that. This LP was written, recorded, and produced by Wind Waker. Literally all of it insane. by the band. Literally fucking insane, honestly. Literally fucking insane if you've heard this album, to know that in the context. Because I was thinking to myself as I was listening to this, when we go and review this album, we have got to take some time to give our flowers to the producer as well, who turns out is also fucking Wind Waker. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Was this what I was hoping for, Marcos? It's crazy. I think back to when Will dropped out of this band. I was like, it's Jover. Fuck. It was, yeah, literally. Yeah. I was like, call it. It's done. Like, Will was so fucking cool. Like, I don't know how you replace a guy like that. And I was so excited about this band. Love Language was such a cool fucking album. They had so much potential. They were so exciting. I'm like, there's no way they can fucking keep up with this. Boom. You get Liam and then like Sirens hits. And I'm like, all right. Fuck it. Right, you've won me over officially. <laughs> We're so back. <laughs> Very quickly. We're so fucking back. And then, like, to then get this album, to get this album on a run of fucking singles that was absolutely insane. Fractured State of Mind, Break the wool, Rules, The Wall. So, like, so good that they the band technically just released them as an EP beforehand. Right. Like, this they officially was... did market it as an EP. Really? I didn't know exactly that was the well, case. Well, we covered it on the show. We reviewed an EP on this show called breaking the wall or something like that oh right you're so right I which don't is think, why at the beginning of this we review it. i think we presented it as news with the release of the wall i'm we almost reviewed it. positive you really i'm positive damn it uh which is why at the top of this i was uh sort of like emphasizing the this is the first official you put release. all the clues there and i still yeah. couldn't connect the lines that's <laughs> unfortunate um so yeah like this band recognizing uh how strong their material is and then just going out and saying, like, actually, we're just going to do a full album, plus all those songs are on it. Uh, so we'd heard a good portion of this heading into it. I-, I was already feeling really good about it. And then coming out of the album, having heard the rest of the songs we hadn't previously, I'm feeling extremely good about this. This is an excellent record. Wind Waker proved to be one of the... Saving graces of modern metalcore, if I'm being honest. I think they inject into this scene something that is desperately needed, which is, funny enough, something the home team touched on as well, a necessity to go out and experiment and being willing to push the boundaries and not be held back by genre norms and just put yourself out there and do something fun and interesting and that you're passionate about. And I think that that is the lesson that I pray so many other bands look at someone like Wind Waker and take away from the experience. Because if every band was willing to approach their music like this, I think I would be so much more excited to talk about all of the artists within the scene on this show in a way that i feel like i really used to be passionate about we've hit a very strange period in this scene where there is a necessity to talk about a lot of the headlining bands in the scene but a lot of those headlining bands are just not willing to put in the same work on developing something interesting and experimental there's a lot of cash grabs there is a lot of phoning it in and we lightly touch on a lot of it and not subtly also dive into quite a bit of it as well on this show on a weekly basis. It is just me sort of either being regularly disappointed or like pleasantly surprised every other week, but we could go into a really consistent, exciting new era of the scene. If everyone was willing to explore and approach their music in the same way that bands like wind waker or even the home team do. 
And it's unfortunate that that's just not the case. But what a breath of fucking fresh air this is in terms of explicitly the modern metalcore scene. I just think that Wind Waker is willing to sort of come in and just force so many different styles all into one singular album and then just sort of see what happens in a way that even if it doesn't fully work, it's still fascinating to sit here and dissect as you listen to it. Keep going. I'm incredibly passionate about it, to be honest. Like, going into this album and hearing something like Venom, which goes from, like, sort of having a hip-hop beat into adult contemporary before, like, hitting a breakdown, is exactly the type of exciting sort of approaches to alternative music that I want to hear out of this scene. And, like, that I can look at a band like Wind Waker now off the back of two really exciting albums that they've dropped and know that I can depend on them for that is incredible like you go back and think of fractured state of mind when that dropped as a single and how absolutely fucking insane with the programming this band gets and the way that that really makes their sound sound significantly more unique than everybody who's in a similar space as them is a very rewarding listening experience and it just wants me to continue to sort of praise a band like this for what they're doing well, I feel like so many other bands are just chasing the same sound over and over and over again that they've seen one or two other artists have immense success with and or running things so far back that they've simplified their music so that it's just like as broad as humanly possible. You have someone who's willing to push boundaries like Wind Waker, and it's impossible for me not to get excited about that. Listen, I, I, I feel like I'm pretty much right there with you as far as my adoration and excitement about this album and this band specifically um i really love everything about we get this a record. lot of singles early on but when i knew this band really fucking had me in their grips is haunting me where we get a little bit of that like sort of modern pop from the band like almost like 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 abrasive modern pop but they make it work so well and you start to think about where this band comes from and where their influences are and i'm like okay well like if i'm thinking of the projects i'm really excited out of australia specifically when it comes to the alternative music scene not only is it a metalcore side that has become like incredibly like dependable um but it's someone like chase atlantic who i feel like has also been one of the most exciting projects that really got their start in the alternative music scene before they expanded and got maybe a little bit bigger than our space yeah much bigger and you see space. that type of influence here though right and then like you talk about all of these artists earlier on and the kind of things that like they were bringing to this the top 40 the k-pop the extreme black metal bring me and you get that shit in here break the rules is one of the best songs of the year so fun bar none it's fun yep. but it's also inventive and it's exciting and it's just like such a, a like a little like Cause, what's the word I'm looking for? Microcosm of exactly what this fucking band is capable of, all in a singular song. I think Villain also gets like not enough credit as as being an extremely great song. Mm -hmm. I think it was like the most undervalued of the tracks on that EP. It felt a little bit like the forgotten single for me as well. Yeah, but every time I hear it, it, it instantly jumps out. It's just one of my favorite of all of the singles. But you're right. Break the rules is huge. Um, I, I like the vulnerability of Juliet as Love well. The like this band also showing like a side of themselves from like a personal angle as well. Like there's just so much depth to mind with a band like Wind Waker. I don't know how you can't listen to this album and just like love or hate it. Just feel like you have so much more to chew on than the vast majority of records that sort of cycle through this alternative scene. Yeah, uh, I don't have much more to say here outside of I, I really, truly do recommend this album. I think Wind Waker are... <laughs> Honestly, just next stop. I, I love this band so much. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say Wind Waker and the home team are both right on the cusp. Yeah. Um, it's hard not to be really excited about the scene when these are the kind of people, like these are your front runners for the potential next band to blow up. Let us know what you thought about these albums in the comments of the YouTube video. Leave five stars on Apple or Spotify if you enjoyed the show. All the links you need in the description of this episode and support us on patreon.com slash podcast if you enjoy what we do. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>